Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining our Lunch and Learn session. My name is Melanie Howell. I'm the Marketing Manager here at Frontline Systems, and I am excited to introduce Patty from North American Payment Solutions, and she is going to be doing the session for us today. Thank you, Melanie. Really appreciate the opportunity that you're giving us to present our solution to your connections, your partners, your end users and prospects. I'd like to begin by introducing myself. Um, as Melanie mentioned, my name is Patty Benitez. I'm Director of Channel Sales for North American Payment Solutions. Also joining me today is Bryce Sweeney, who is not only a credit card processing industry expert, but also our ERP integrations manager. Now, for today's presentation, I'd like to begin in a, in a very informal way. I'd like to actually start by showing you what exactly the Stage 300 integration looks like. So what you see on the screen right now is Stage 300. You'll notice that APS Pays will appear as a menu item for you right within your Stage 300 module menu. We follow Sage's guidelines as far as your security settings, so you will not have to rekey them in or re-set uh, them up. We also follow the user counts, so it's very standard. Most of what you will be seeing today is standard Sage functionality, but I will point out the areas in which we are different from other processes. I'd like to begin by talking about level three processing, and I'll explain during the PowerPoint after this uh, software presentation what exactly level three consists of. But up for the time being, keep in mind level three with our integration is automated and will guarantee the very lowest rates from Visa and MasterCard for any U.S.-based company processing business-to-business -business or business-to-government transactions. It is very simple for us to turn it on, and you can see that we also allow for for splitting um, AR batches by payment code. Many people prefer to have their batches separated by date, but we have received requests from several merchants to separate by payment code. Now, the reason that I like to point this out is because it is entirely optional. So you can decide which way you'd like to go when we initially install the software for you. You will also notice that I have several items when, you ha when you're in the APS Pays menu item. The very first one is APS Customers. Now, this is the area in which we will take advantage of customers that you've already preset within Sage 300, and we will actually allow you to enter as many credit cards per customer as you need to. Now, if you're already processing with Sage Payments, we do have a migration utility available that will allow us to migrate uh, the data from the credit card information over to Sage 300. And Bryce, I know that you're on the line. If you wouldn't mind, there's a, a specific explanation in regards to migrating the data. I don't know if you'd like to expand. If you, if you would, if, please feel free to do so at this moment. Oh, sure, yeah. So we, we have the ability to migrate tokens from Sage Exchange to APS. So if you're already utilizing the integration that Sage has written, we do have the ability to utilize the credit card tokens that you have. And the reason why we wrote that is because a lot of merchants, in fact, hundreds of merchants have switched to our solution over the past few years. And we really wanted to make sure that those customers didn't lose their the credit cards they had saved on file for their customers. So we wrote that utility tool. And the nice thing about it is it only takes 20 to 30 minutes to port those credit cards over. So it really doesn't lengthen the time of install either. So what you see on the screen right now is my customer information with a specific credit card that I chose to be the default credit card, which means that when I process an order entry or anywhere that I'm allowed to process credit card transactions, this is the credit card that will appear. However, since we do follow Sage's security settings, the users will be able to add new cards, update cards, or delete them on the fly, or do them with this, within this menu item. You can also choose to make a card active or non-active. And we do accept multiple payment or credit card types. So you'll notice that I have several available for this particular customer. Some are Visa, some are MasterCard, some are American Express. Speaking of American Express, we do offer American Express Absolute, which will help guarantee the very lowest rates from American Express, both in the United States and Canada. 
So let's jump into order entry and see what the transaction would look like within order entry. Once again, I'd like to point out the fact that you will notice I'm basically going through standard stage functionality. I'm going to go ahead and begin an order. And as you can see here, I'm just going to go through my customer list, choose my customer. And once, once I choose the customer, if I do want to take advantage of level three processing, I'm going to go ahead and key in a purchase order number and then go right into my item field and choose the item. Many times when I'm presenting the integration, folks that are already using Sage will stop me because it, you'll notice it's very similar to what you already do. So now that I have my items, I'm going to go ahead and post the transaction. Standard Sage functionality is still in process here. Once I post the transaction, you will notice that the APS CC payment button will become available for us to use. Before then, it was actually grayed out. If I click on this button, this is the area in which you're actually stepping outside of Sage, which really you won't notice it because we pre-fill in the credit card information that you chose as a default. And remember I mentioned, if the user is permitted, the user will be able to add a card on the fly, edit, or delete. Also, you decide what type of transaction you will give permission to apply within any particular customer. So for example, in this case, I have make a sale or authorize a transaction. And I should say the security setting is actually per user. So you decide what level of transactions the user will be able to apply. You will also notice we have a transaction history, excellent way for you to keep an audit trail of where the transaction is in the process. Now, you'll notice that the CVV code is blank. You will decide when you set it up if you would like to make this a required field or not. The CVV code, also known as the validation code, which is behind the Visa and MasterCard uh, file, it's a three-digit code. Uh, if you decide that you want to make it a required field, the user will be forced to key it in in order to go on to the next area in which they can either make the sale or authorize the transaction. If you decide that it is not a required field, they can simply click on either one of the buttons and continue with the transaction. I'm going to go ahead and pre-authorize this transaction. What's happening now is the transaction is going through our gateway. Now, as part of setup and entirely optional, if you get any pop-up windows that state any of the information you provided is not correct, you can stop the user in their tracks, have them go back and rectify the information, or you can simply allow them to continue by clicking OK. Now once I click OK, even though there was no errors in my transaction, once I click OK, the transaction is now pre-authorized, and you'll see the transaction history will indicate that the transaction has been pre-authorized. You will also notice that the capture or void authorization button will become available because I could finalize the transaction right then and there. It is not necessary for you to pre-authorize a transaction in order to capture the funds. You can actually directly capture the funds within order entry and simply bypass the pre-authorization process. If you do decide to use the pre-authorization, you can take advantage of the amount of time a pre-authorization can be valid using our integration. The amount of time is 7 to 30 days. You are no longer limited to 7 days, which other processes will limit you to. Now in this case, we've completed the transaction. I'd like to briefly show you where the transaction is in the APS case portal. So what you'll see on the screen is the APS portal, which is the North American Payment Solutions portal. You can process transactions directly from the portal. You can see we have sale, operate, capture, avoid, and refund. Within the portal, you'll notice that you will have to type in all of the information that was readily available for you within Sage 300. You can also set up for repetitive invoicing within the portal. And if you go to reports, you'll notice that we do have a very robust reporting functionality with an immense amount of sorting criteria. We make it almost impossible for you not to be able to find the transaction. Our project managers will also discuss setting you up to auto-batch. 
if you batch hop by 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will have the funds available in your bank account the next morning by 8 a.m. Now, I want you to keep in mind, the batch report will be created for all card brands, which means if you're using American Express Hop Blue, you no longer will have to reconcile American Express separately. We will have the report readily available for all different card brands so you don't have to worry about the cumbersome reconciliation process. Now, we will give you a bird's eye view of the transaction. As you can see, I will provide, or North American Payment Solutions will provide you with the status, which is in, in our case pending capture, it's a card authorization. You will get a transaction ID which will follow the transaction within SAGE, and it is an excellent means for you to cross-reference the transaction. We will also show you your customer's name, first and last four digits of the credit card, as well as the amount. The email address you see here is also set up within Sage, and this email address will appear under the billing address for the credit card and will be emailed a receipt whenever you complete the transaction. If I click on the transaction ID, notice how I will not only be showing you the credit card information, but also the bill to and ship to information, the order information. We will show you down to the line level detail. And I do want to point out the fact, especially for U.S.-based companies, this is all of the information that's being sent to Visa and MasterCard on our merchant's behalf in order to qualify our merchant's rates for the very lowest level three processing rates. So let's go back to stage 300. And I'm going to go ahead now and continue my standard process and just say that I'd like to go ahead and ship. Now, I, I would have added a shipping fee at this point. Um, otherwise, you can add a shipping fee when you decide to invoice and capture at the time of invoice. So in this case, now that I'm going to go ahead and ship all and then post. Now, once again, it's the standard Sage 300 functionality. It is taking a few seconds. I do want to apologize. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to this. And We are ready to ship, and that means that we are ready to invoice. And now we can go into order entry, invoice entry, and capture the funds. Now remember, the pre-authorization is entirely optional. If you decide to capture directly within the invoice, you can capture the funds. Simply add your shipping fee at the invoice level, and you'll be able to capture the exact amount. So let me go ahead and choose my customer and choose my shipment number. Now, once I, I do this, once again, standard stage functionality, I will be able to capture the funds. And you'll see how simple it is. I'm really not going to do anything out of the ordinary. Notice how my APS credit card payment button is available if I click on it. Not only will I be able to see my audit trail and know that this transaction has been authorized, it will default the credit card information onto the screen for me. Once again, if you wanted to make the CVV code a required field, you'd have to key it in. I do want to point out the fact that you'll see different types of options now, one being make the sale, the other capture and void pre-authorization. So I'm going to go ahead and capture. Once again, the transaction will go through our gateway. You can see I have the options available. It will go through our gateway. You'll see that the transaction will post the order invoice entry for you, and you won't be able to cancel it once you say yes. So I'm going to go ahead and finalize it. The transaction is being processed through our gateway. We're going to verify the address information. The credit card information is a match. If you're using the CDV code, we will verify it's a match as well. We will let you know exactly where the transaction will appear in what batch, and you're ready to go. So the transaction has now been completed. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into the portal and see what the transaction looks like within the portal. So many of you will notice that it's very simple, very straightforward. We try to keep your process intact. However, we have added several features. Uh, I mentioned a few during this presentation. There are others. We also have integrations into many third-party products. 
So this is the transaction that we just captured. Notice how it will indicate that it was pre-authorized and then captured. It has been approved. And once again, if you key, if you click on the transaction ID, you will be able to see details regarding the transaction. The last area in which you can process credit card transactions is in receipt bachelor. Now the reason I don't go through the entire process here is because of the fact that there really isn't anything different that you would do when you receive cash or check. We simply now give you the option to make a payment by credit card. I do want to show you, because I chose to separate my payments by payment type, what it would look like. Remember, this is entirely optional, so you do have the option to separate by date instead of by payment type. Okay, so as far as page 300 is concerned, this is pretty much the presentation. I'm going to go ahead and continue now with our PowerPoint presentation so that we can talk about the other features and benefits that North American Payment Solutions has to offer. So I'd like to backtrack and talk a little bit more about who we are, uh, where we came from, and why we are where we are now. Uh, we are one of the top credit card processing companies within the United States and Canada. We service thousands of merchants nationwide, and we'll talk about why in just a few seconds. I'd like to walk you through uh, what we typically um, discuss when a merchant approaches us. More than anything, what we'd like to do is to educate our merchants and have them understand where the fees are coming from, who's making the money where, and understand their current statements. We help them to decipher the statement. We also would like to walk them through their monthly bill and have them understand it. Uh, as I said, decipher their monthly statements. I'd like to also show you a competitive overview and the benefits of North American Payment Solutions. I do have a question, Bryce. Is this functionality available in Sage 300C web screen? Yes, our integration is compatible with Sage 300C. Yeah, and, and all of our integrations, Sage 300 included, work on premise uh, in a shared cloud environment and also on a hosted cloud as well. Thank you, Bryce. So, um, getting back to uh, where we came from, who we are, and what we represent. We have been in the payment processing industry for well over 25 years processing for thousands of merchants both in the United States and Canada. We will soon open market in Latin America and uh, Australia, Africa, Europe. Uh, we have customers who are processing anywhere from $2,000 a month to over $10 million a month. And we provide customer support team at your fingertips. Now what I mean by that is that we offer a live human being on the other side of the line anytime you call support. Guaranteed 24-7, 365 days a year. Now let's jump into the different fee structures and what a lot of the merchants struggle with. Um, Bryce, I'd love for you to explain the, the fee structures if you wouldn't mind. Sure. And this is something that I always recommend people to do a little bit of research on as far as just throwing a Google search best way to price a merchant account for the merchant. But there is a lot of confusion out there as far as what's actually in the best interest of, of you, the, the actual company who's processing credit cards. So a lot of merchant processors will promote and advertise that they have a flat rate available and that flat rates are the best way to go. Reality is this is actually the worst way to go and, and I'll give you one quick example and I'll give you a Canadian example and a US example. So in Canada, a typical flat rate for like a distributor would be around 3% that, that a company would offer you. Well, there's a lot of card types you're going to accept where the interchange, which is the hard cost, is actually 1% or even 1.5%. So if your processor is offering a 3% flat rate, you can see that the spread or the profit margin that they're earning on top of the hard cost can be extremely high on some transactions. The second the one on the screen is called tiered pricing. So this is similar to a flat rate, but instead of having one 3% rate, now you have a 2%, a 2.5%, and a 3.5% different flat rates that they're going to offer you depending on the card types you accept. And on, now I'll give you a U.S.-based example. So in the U.S., there's something called a regulated debit card. The regulated debit card hard cost 
is 0.05%. Meaning if your processor charges you, let's say, a half a percent on this transaction, they would be earning 0.45% because the hard cost is 0 0.05. Where if you're on a tiered structure and the best rate possible that they're going to offer you is 2%, now they're earning nearly 2% in profit on some transactions that you're processing, which depending on your credit card volume could be a, a very, very high amount of profitability built into your merchant account for your processor. The third way to be priced, this is becoming more and more prevalent. I've been in the industry for a very long time and I'm seeing Interchange Plus more and more. It, this is how we price all of our merchant accounts. And just to give you one quick example, if you were doing, let's say, $100,000 a month in credit cards, and you are at an interchange plus rate of half a percent, that means your processor is gonna earn $500 in profit. The rest of your bill will all be the exact hard cost on every single transaction. So you take a regulated debit card, which costs 0 0.05, you add the processor's profit, and then you just, you, that's your total bill on that transaction. So you can see paying about half a percent versus 2% on tiered versus 3% on flat, it's really a no-brainer once you learn the three different structures that Interchange Plus is the best way to go. It's the most transparent way to be priced because you actually can see the transaction hard cost on your merchant statements and on your merchant account. And ultimately, you're going to save the most money with Interchange Plus. Excellent. So thank you, Bryce. One of the questions we get very often is, why not just process with authorized unmet. I've been processing with them forever and I'm happy. Why not just process with other processes? What do you have to offer that's different? So let's start with authorized.net. And Bryce, would you mind explaining this screen as well? Sure. So what makes us unique, and many of you may know this, many of you may not, there's really three pieces or three different organizations you have to work with to have a fully integrated solution into something like an ERP like Sage. You need one, the company who actually processes your credit cards, that's your merchant provider, that's who we are. You need a gateway, which is kind of like a middleware. It's a middleware that connects you to your software to the processor. And Authorize.net, that's what they are. But what makes us unique is we're not only the processor, we're also that middleware. We have our own gateway called ATS Pays that we've integrated into Sage and multiple products. Uh, the third piece is you need somebody to actually write the software. You need somebody to write that gateway integration into your ERP, into your e-commerce or POS platform, and that's also what we do. So we're actually all three pieces of those in one. So when somebody says, hey, we're using Authorize.net right now, you know, what makes you different? Real, yes, there's some fees we can eliminate and lower the fees for you because you're not going to have to pay for that middleware anymore. But the, the main difference is we can lower your merchant account cost. We can eliminate your authorized.net fees entirely because we replace that with our own gateway. And we build out the integration as well. So if you need additional product enhancements or version upgrades in the future, you don't have to go pay a third-party company to rewrite or add those enhancements that you need based on like the gateway API. We actually are doing that for all of our merchants um, out of our own pocket. It's, it's part of our development cost. So we're wrapping all three solutions into one and providing that to, to everybody who wants that integration. That's a great explanation. And I do want to add the fact that many people will ask us, why not just continue processing with my bank? I've had a long-lasting relationship with my bank, and I don't see the need to switch. One of the main reasons, of course, would be the fact that you, you are able to process within your ERP system once you switch to North American Payment Solutions. And not only that, you will be able to take advantage of the fact that we do not charge a setup fee. There are no maintenance fees. We provide support at no charge. And for U.S.-based companies, level three processing, of course, would also be a huge plus. So let's talk about level three processing. How exactly would that impact you? Bryce, again, I know I keep taking advantage of you, but if, would you please explain level three processing as well? Yeah, not a problem. So if you're not familiar with level three processing or that terminology and you process credit cards today, I highly recommend you spend 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes and do a little research on level three because it might be 
the biggest way for you to change your margins on sales that you're making without having to make much of a difference or even a cost to your company. So level three processing has been around nearly a decade now. It really came, came about when the U.S. economy crashed, and it was part of that Dodd-Frank bill that was passed to help add additional regulations in the banking system and insurance system. Well, level three processing was one of the add-ons to that bill. And what it does, it lowers the hard cost, the interchange rate, on business to business and business to government transactions. And just to give you one quick example, the standard Visa purchasing card rate, the interchange rate that you would pay for a B2B Visa card is 2.65%. That's the going rate for Visa right now. For MasterCard, it's 2.60. When you send level three data on top of the standard level one stuff that you're already doing, which is like the uh, 16 digits on the credit card, the name on the card expiration date. When you send the level three data, which you can see on the screen here, instead of paying 2.65 for that visa, now you pay 1.85% for the same exact card. So one of the problems that we've seen throughout the years is most merchants are not willing to key all this information in. Because if you're running several transactions a day, a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand transactions a month, this can be extremely cumbersome to key in all this data on every transaction. So what we've done is we've actually fully automated the process within your ERP system or within your e-commerce system. So if you take a purchasing card, you run it standard workflow, which Patty already walked through in Sage, to where you're just processing the, the sales order, you're processing the invoice, you're processing in batch. And what we do is we collect all this information off of your invoice, off of the customer data information, all the ship to, ship from, product information, and we send that off to Visa and MasterCard on every transaction. And what that does is it lowers that hard cost from 2.65 down to 1.85. The best rule of thumb is if you are a distributor, manufacturer, wholesaler, every $100,000 you do in business-to-business -business payments, you will actually lower the hard cost $800 in fees every time. So if you're doing a couple million dollars a year in credit cards, this could mean, you know, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year in, in fees that you're actually reducing. And the nice thing and and this is really an important piece of level three to explain, it doesn't actually change the profit margin from one processor to the next. What it actually does is it lowers the hard cost, the Visa MasterCard fees that every processor has to pay. So when we come in and say Based on your merchant statements, based on the analysis after we ran, ran the analysis on your merchant account, we can save you $20,000 a year. That doesn't mean that we're somehow you know, losing money on your account. We're actually lowering our hard cost to Visa and then we're passing those savings on to you. That was an excellent explanation. And what I have on the screen right now is a sample statement from other processes. So being that level three has specific requirements, how do you know that you're actually getting level three rates from your current processes? Well, let's start by the fact that we like to help you understand your current statement and, and exactly where those fees are coming from. So Bryce, I'm going to hand it back over to you. I'd actually like to give you control of the keyboard and mouse because I know you might need it in this case. If you wouldn't mind going through an explanation of the statement you see here, and then we have a sample statement from North American Payment Solutions as well as an analysis review after that. Sure. So again, kind of going back to what I had said before, if you're on a flat rate or like a base plus where it doesn't actually detail out the card types you're accepting, there is absolutely no way for you to know whether you're getting those lowered interchange rates. And to go back to that flat rate, if you're at a 3%, a 2.5%, a 3.5% flat rate, if your processor is sending that level three data to Visa MasterCard to lower the hard cost, that actually doesn't even benefit you. It, it benefits the processor because they're lowering their hard costs, keeping your fees at the same rate. So it's actually just increasing their profit margin. So what you really want from a processor is somebody who can pass the level three data on your behalf, so it's automated, not manual, and then it allows you to be able to look at your merchant statement and look at all the different card types you accept 
to where you can see the level three data actually passing and your savings accumulating throughout each transaction. And Patty, if you can go to the next statement so I can speak to that. So this is really what you want to be able to look for on your merchant statement. And rather than just having a single line item that says Visa, here's your fees, what you want to be able to see is a bunch of different Visas, a bunch of different MasterCards because reality is if you're taking a few transactions a month in credit cards, you're taking different Visa types, different MasterCard types. So you want to be able to see here's a Visa business debit card, 0 0.024 and 10 cents. And this is a great example. If you're on a flat rate or a tiered rate, you're paying astronomically higher than the actual hard cost. So if we priced you at, again, half a percent above interchange, you would pay this number plus our half a percent. So really having visibility in the, the individual card types is going to not only allow you to keep your processor on its toes, right, make sure that they're giving you all the information, but it's also going to help you analyze what's our true hard cost on our merchant account. And if my processor has me at half a percent, I know that they're earning $500 a month based on my $100,000 in volume. So let's go ahead and go back to the table with our processor and renegotiate those rates. If you don't have all this data, the only thing you can really do is tell your processor, hey, I'm unhappy, I'm paying too much. Where if you have this data, you can actually talk specifically and drill down to the actual profit margin and say, you're earning $6,000 a year on my account. I don't think you need to be earning that much. Let's go ahead and renegotiate that rate. It just it allows you to have a lot more power and knowledge based on your merchant account. And that's really what we do. It's part of our sales process, actually. We walk you through the statements that you're currently having and then the statements that you're going to have with us. That way, you're really equipped with the knowledge of what does each individual line item actually mean on your merchant account. So speaking of savings and the savings comparison, let's talk about the analysis results. This is how all of our analysis look, meaning we always put the breakdown of the current fees from your current credit card provider, and then we put the proposed fees as far as what would you have paid for that exact month with our company. So in this particular case, their current provider had them on a tiered platform. And you can see that because all credit cards are being charged a base rate of 2%. They have a transaction fee on top, which that's normal. But then they also have these surcharges down here, and you can see it's called mid-qualified, non-qualified. So if you do see fee structures that say fully qualified, mid-qualified, non-qualified on your, on your statements, that means you're on a tiered platform. You are not on Interchange Plus. So all in all, this merchant paid 4,600 and change on $128,000 in volume. So their effective rate uh, is actually pretty high. It's, it's right around 4%. Where with us, again, we offered them a flat fee on top of hard costs. And we actually detail out the hard cost to the penny. That way they know exactly how much they would have paid for that month. In this case, this merchant uh, would have saved and actually did become our customer, but if they would have processed with us that month, that October, they would have saved $1,400 or just under 17 grand annually. The, the biggest point I want to make here, this merchant saved 30% switching to us. If we were just your standard run-of-the-mill credit card processor that didn't fully automate level three, the most we would have been able to save them is about $300 a month. The fact that we automated level three for them added another $1,000 a month in savings off of the hard cost. So even if you have a good rate right now with your processor, 0.2%, 0.1%, 0.3%, odds are there's still a lot of savings to be had if you have business-to-business -business transactions because we can lower these fees as well. And keep in mind, the level of savings that you obtain is free. We analyze your statements at absolutely no charge and provide you with this type of analysis. Now, say for example that you've been struggling with upgrading your system because it's, it's just not cost justified for you yet. Or if you need a third party product that you, you know you've needed for years and, and you simply have not been able to budget for it. 
take a look at the level of savings that we would be able to offer you and that would instantly allow you to purchase the upgrade or purchase that third party product you've been wanting to purchase for, for a while. Thank you for that explanation, Bryce. It was excellent. I do want to just go through a quick competitive overview, uh, mainly because if you are processing with your bank or with other processors, we've noticed several very specific differences. One would be the pricing structure. Many of the other processors will promote and enforce a flat rate. And a lot of the merchants are happy with the flat rate. But once they find out about the level of savings they could potentially be missing because of the flat rate contract, they instant, instantly switch to interchange plus for the reasons that Bryce explained. Chargeback assistance. We do not charge for chargeback assistance whatsoever. And what we do offer is to provide you with that type of assistance um, whenever needed. Other processors will charge a minimum of $395 and can increase considerably. The monthly fees. So what are the monthly fees? These are just the standard fees that every processor will charge. We have a $15 monthly fee that will go across the board no matter what the volume of your account is. So whether you're processing the $2,000 a month or $10 million a month, the fee will not increase. With other processors, we have found that the fee increase is dependent on the volume. PCI assistance and services. Many processors will charge $35 a month, $75 a year, to $100 a year. We do not charge for this. We have a team, an in-house team that is dedicated exclusively to making sure all of our merchants become PCI compliant and remain PCI compliant. We are aware of the fact that many processors use third-party companies to enforce the PCI compliance, which is why they charge. I mentioned in the beginning that we do not charge for the credit card processing module, installation, implementation, setup, maintenance, or support. Many other processors will charge, and I'll quote and unquote, an initial setup fee, which is about $1,500 or more. We do not charge for any of it. There are no integration fees. I really call them money in your pocket fees because there's no reason for it. The integration is already written with your ERP. There's no reason for us to continue charging for it. We have noticed in many statements that many processors charge, depending on the volume, about 0.05%. So you do not have to worry about that with, with us. The batch funding time, usually processors will announce the fact that they have next day funding available. That usually means 24-hour funding. With us, it's definitely only 12 to 11 hours. And then, of course, the gateway and vault fees. There's a $10 monthly fee from us. Other processors we've noticed that can go as high as $20 per month. So keep all of these little things in mind. We like to make sure that you're aware of them. We've also made a list of challenges and solutions uh, based on the challenges that our merchants have recorded. Let's start with the fact that you will receive very transparent merchant statements. We guarantee our rates in writing, so you don't have to worry about the rates creeping up on you. We talked about free PCI assistance. Level 3 processing is completely automated. You may have to type in the purchase order number, but that's it. The fact that we do not charge for installation, module, implementation, training, and I know I said that in the wrong order, but I did want to recap and make sure that everyone knows there is no charge. We offer the very simple gateway fees and the 12-hour funding. The 24-7, 365 days a year live support. Remember that. It is live support. The online management and reporting offers literally thousands of reports. We also offer a multitude of state-of-the-art equipment, which we typically will set up, maintain, and support at no charge. We offer the ability to process within the United States and Canada, and as I mentioned, we are expanding worldwide. We have a very streamlined installation process. We, we install hundreds of these um, install, integrated integrations per week. Um, literally, it will take 10 minutes to install the software, 30 minutes to set it up, and then training is entirely up to you. We offer a very quick approval process. It takes three to four business days for our underwriters to review and approve your application. American Express Ops Blue is available not only in the United States, but also in Canada. We will also help 
pay for your cancellation fees. Our number one goal is to teach you how to keep any processor on your toes, including us. And if you do decide to switch to North American Payment Solutions, we want to make it as simple as possible. So definitely the cancellation fees are typically on us. We also have additional integrations. We integrate with Magento Website Pipeline, Instinct, Shopify, WooCommerce, and many others. We offer mobile solutions, integration to point of sale solutions, and I'm really not being, um, I, I, I'm not giving them justice on the screen because there are many more products that we integrate with. However, if you are interested in an integration, I, I do want to let you know that the majority of the time we do not charge to write the integration to a, a particular third party product. Now, what would the next step be? If anybody is curious in learning how to decipher your current merchant statement, what has to happen for you to get the analysis? Simply submit three months of your most current merchant statement. I will put my contact information and prices at the end of the presentation. Once we receive your statements, we send them to our analysis team. And the minute that I get the results, I contact you to go through a full presentation of the analysis results. We will go line by line and explain to you, once again, who makes the money where, where the fees are coming from, and how much a processor is making off of your account. If you decide to make the switch, we will send you a merchant application. And as I mentioned, it will take three to four business days for the application to be approved. Once that happens, our project managers will contact you, go through a mini process review of your existing credit card processing procedures, mimic them onto our system, and then explain all of the new features that we have to offer so you can fully take advantage of our integration. So I challenge each and every one of you, take the $500 challenge with us. If we are not able to beat or match any competitor's rates, we will pay you $500 for simply allowing us to analyze your statement. That's how sure we are that we will be able to beat or match any competitor's rates. The question is, can you discuss point of sale integration? Yeah, so we have a couple of out of the box point of sale integrations that have already been built for Sage. So if you already have a POS um, that you're wanting us to integrate into our platform, we're happy to talk to you, talk to the POS company and develop that through our API and our SDK for our gateway. If you're looking for a POS, we do have some partners that we've partnered up with on Sage um, that have already, we already have a lot of merchants boarded um, using those POSs. And by the way, they work in both the U.S. and Canada and actually worldwide. We're just waiting for the, the contracts to finalize so we can launch those in Latin America. But if you're, if you're in the U.S. or Canada and you're looking for an integrated POS, we're, we're happy to accommodate and talk to you about that. Thank you, Bryce. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any other questions, I do see a question regarding the ERPs that we integrate with. We integrate not only with Sage 300, we also integrate with Sage 100, Acumatica, FAPB1, QuickBooks, and I don't know, did I miss anything? Accountmate? Uh, Patty, I had a question. As you were going through the presentation, you mentioned the CVV codes, uh, putting those in. Now, is that something that is necessary to get the level three rates or no? That Great question. Great. I, uh, oh, go ahead, Bryce, please. Oh, I, I can answer that, Melanie. So CVV is only used for chargeback purposes. It does not help you qualify for lower interchange rates. So. To answer your question, no, CVV is not required to get level three rates from Visa MasterCard. But what we do recommend is if you're taking an order from a customer that you do not have a solid, long relationship with, it's always best to collect a CVV at that point because if they ever issue a dispute and say they never purchased the product from you, it, collecting the CVV at the time of sale does help you fight that chargeback. Um, but if it's a customer that you've been doing relationships with a long time, there's really no point 
in collecting the CVV, and no, it does not affect your credit card fees that you pay at all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bryce. The one last question that I received was with the pre-authorization length of time. I do want to underline the fact that if you process pre-authorizations using the North American Payment Solutions integration, you will not have to re-pre-authorize every seven days. You do have the option to extend the authorization valid, valid length of time to anywhere between seven and 30 days. And That's a great um, point, Patty, because if, if, you, if you have a company or if, if you're processing credit cards and you have some products that are back ordered uh, and it takes you a week or two to actually ship those out, one of the issues that we've seen throughout the years is companies will have to keep reauthorizing that credit card every few days. And that really does two things. One, it raises your fees that you're paying because you're paying every transaction even if it drops off. But really the biggest issue there is the time it takes you to go back and keep doing that and keep track, but then also for your customer on their, cre on their credit card statement that they see on their credit card, they keep seeing your company add another transaction. So it can cause a lot of confusion and that actually can lead to chargebacks as well because it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like you keep charging them. So that's one of the reasons why we've added that 30-day pre-authorization time because if you do take two to three weeks to send out a big custom order or you're waiting on some back order products, you don't you can really set it and forget it and you don't have to keep continuously coming back to that order, that sales order or invoice constantly for a couple of weeks.